So I wanted to make a video about the HP 48G and in particular talk about its programming language called RPL or Reverse Polish Lisp. So before RPL, all programmable HP calculators used keystroke programming. And the general idea of a keystroke program is that it's simply a recording of keystrokes that get played back later. Uh, so keystroke programming uh, did support simple conditionals and loops via go-tos as well as subroutines. Uh, but it's a relatively bare bones programming experience. And so after the um, HP uh, 41C, HP decided it really needed a higher level programming environment. And so to understand RPL, you first need to understand RPN, which is reverse Polish notation. Uh, reverse Polish notation is the basic operation for HP calculators. And uh, with RPN, operations are performed on a stack of numbers. Uh, the operations are, are postfixed, so the function comes after the arguments. So for example, to calculate uh, 2 um, plus 3 times 4, I'd enter those numbers uh, onto the stack and then hit uh, times and then plus. And after this is done, I'm left with just the result. So a big difference uh, with RPL from keystroke programming calculators is that there's not a separate mode for creating programs. Uh, to, to find a program, you just enter it on the stack and then evaluate it. So we'll start with a very simple program to calculate the area of a circle from a radius. And this example shows that RPL programs can look very similar to keystroke programs. So programs in RPL are defined within uh, Guillemet characters. Uh, and of course, to calculate the area of a circle, you would uh, square the radius uh, and then multiply uh, by pi. And then because pi is a symbol on the HP 48G, uh, you then need to convert that into a number. Uh, so now we've got our uh, RPL program on the stack. And we can actually just uh, take that and assign it to uh, a variable uh, called area. And then um, that that name is, is actually available within in the vars menu. Uh, so now I can go ahead and say enter a 5 radius uh, and just hit area and I'll get the area of my circle of radius 5. So the next example I'll show is slightly more complex and demos a few more features of RPL, in particular structures and loops. So this function is called is prime and takes an argument from the top of the stack and then writes a 1 back to the stack if that argument was prime and 0 otherwise. So RPL is a stack-based language and it's like fourth in that it uses postfix notation where operations come after operands. So the is prime begins by pushing the number 1 uh, to the stack and then assigning the two top numbers from the stack to two local variables n and prime. Uh, it then defines a structure using nested guillemets that defines the scope for those local variables and starts with a test for an edge case where the argument n was less than or equal to 1. Uh, and it uses an if statement. But notice in the Boolean expression, the less than or equals operation comes after the operands. Uh, and in this case, if the test succeeds, uh, the program pushes 0 back onto the stack and ends. But if the argument was above 1, the program defines a for loop uh, using an index variable i ranging from 2 uh, to n minus 1. And for each i, it checks whether uh, n mod i is 0. Uh, and if so, um, that means that n has um, um, a divisor and is therefore not prime. Uh, so in that case it stores uh, 0 to the prime flag. And after the loop uh, the program finishes by pushing the prime, the prime flag to the stack. So again it takes a while to get used to reading RPL code since a lot of the time you're reading from uh, right to left. And so I've entered um, as prime into my calculator already uh, and so I can now just um, enter some numbers onto the stack and run as prime from the vars menu. Uh, so 61 is a, is a prime. 
that's 63, isn't it? Last example I want to show is an example of a more functional style program that would be familiar to say a Lisp programmer. Uh, this program is called Filter and it takes two arguments, um, a list uh, and a predicate, uh, which is a program uh, that returns uh, true or false. Uh, and so we, the filter returns a new list that contains just the items of L uh, that match the predicate. And the way it does it is it, it actually kind of recurses down the list. Uh, so for example, if the list is empty, then it will uh, return an empty list in response. Um, but otherwise it will take the, the head of the list, uh, so the first element, uh, pass it to the, the predicate uh, program. Um, if that returns true, um, then it, um, the, the head actually passes the filter. Um, so it will um, concatenate the, the first item with the result of filtering uh, the remainder of the list. Um, if it doesn't match the predicate, uh, then the, the, the filter uh, recurses on itself um, to the tail of the list. Uh, so to show you this working, uh, I can just pull up a, um, a list of numbers from 1 to 20. Uh, and push that onto the stack. Uh, and then I'll um, pick my is prime function that we entered before, uh, and I'll pass those two uh, to the filter program. And what I get is uh, the list of primes uh, from uh, between 1 and 20. The functions are a first class citizens in RPL and you can pass them or return them uh, from other functions. RPL is dynamically scoped, so there are some limitations on the types of functional programming you can do as compared with lexically scoped languages, but it is a fascinating mashup of um, RPN, Forth and Lisp. It's definitely a step up in power from keystroke programming. I read uh, online somewhere that if you watch uh, MIT's open course where uh, CS 101 class, you'll see Sussman and Albison teaching scheme uh, to a class full of electrical engineers from HP uh, back in the 80s. Uh, so that may explain some of the origins of RPL. Uh, the other thing to say is that the whole operating system on the HP 48G uh, is implemented in RPL, so it's turtles all the way down as it were. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video and found it useful.